My question is regarding the Sibylline Oracles. Oh, as one does. As one does? Yes. Okay, do you think they are genuine or simply a later Christian edit on the pagan texts? Could the Sibyl have been given prophecy? I know the Church Fathers, St. Athenagoras in particular did, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. Well, my thoughts, such as they are, are that they are, yes, they are authentic. And uh, just so you know what we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen, the Sibylline Oracle uh, was a, a Sibyl, also she's called, uh, was a, uh, not unlike the Oracle at Delphi, it was a lady who told the future. And people from all over um, the Roman Empire before the time of Christ would go to her to get um, prophecies. Of course, the prophecies were not always clear. But nevertheless, the, uh, several books of them were written down. And uh, uh, in one of these, she appears to refer to the coming of our Lord. So that's what that refers to. Uh, this, by the way, is uh, immortalized in the Dies Irae, which you may have heard right. at, uh, at uh, funerals, at requiems, uh, which starts out in English. Day of wrath or day of mourning, uh, see fulfilled the prophet's warning. Uh, David and uh, Sybil both agreeing. Uh, and yes, the church fathers believe that they were genuine, and so do I, because I, the church fathers were closer in time to that era than either I am or um, unbelieving academics in ivory towers. So I'll go with the church fathers over uh, Professor uh, Pivity of Harvard Divinity School any day. You, you made one very poignant uh, remark uh, before the show on this, which was that, um, you know, uh, about Caiaphas. Oh, yeah, well, that's, that's very true. I mean, the question is, can prophecy uh, go through uh, impure sources? Yeah. You know, the Sybil being pagan. And, of course, our Lord said, uh, you know, Caiaphas, rather, whose job as high priest was to prophecy, amongst other things, uh, said, one man must die for the whole nation, and his prophecy, we are told, was true. So, uh, a prophet can be non-Catholic, can be unholy, as in not a good person, and yet still be used as a venue of truth by the Almighty. Uh, context is everything, I mean... That's likely to happen to the Sybil, about whom, you know, on whose every word people hung, than it is to Reverend Ike. Mm, yeah. You know, in other words, the more influence the individual has, the more likely God is likely to use them. And then, of course, at the end of the day, how do you tell whether or not it was a genuine prophecy? Well, as with all of our Catholic prophecies, at the end of the day, it's, does it come true? Right. If it doesn't come true, then it was phony. If it does, then it wasn't. <laughs> Good that's, advice. That's, well, I mean, that's the problem with prophecy. I mean, you, you don't really know until they're accomplished. Yeah. Their full meaning. Yeah. Because very often, I mean, I'll give you an example, one of my personal favorites. Um, Blessed Catherine and Anne Catherine Emmerich, mm -hmm. who had these visions of the future. Yeah. In which she saw families gathered around black boxes out of which the devil spoke. Now, you look at that, that seems odd. Well, wait a minute. Let's pretend for a second, because she had visions, bear in mind, and these visions had no, absolutely no uh, soundtrack or mm -hmm. explanation. What do you think she would th she she gets a vision of a 21st century family sitting around watching Game of Thrones and it's steamiest? What do you think she would think? How, what would she say about that? And of course, there's a sense in which she'd be right. Mm -hmm. It's not the devil directly speaking. But it certainly is a rather evil pandering to our worst, uh, uh, our worst impulses. For all that Game of Thrones is a very compelling storyline. My favorite prophecy of hers, apparently, um, was uh, when she predicted that in the 1960s God would let loose a great, great legions of demons from hell. And when, when, when did she live? Like the 1600s? No, no, 1820s. Oh, 1820s. 18, seven, late 1700s, early, early 1800s. But boy, did she pick the right decade. I'll say. Jackpot. <laughs> I'll say. Uh, and some of them went to San Francisco and wore flowers in their hair. What? <sighs> yeah, they did. All right, what else we got?
Thank you.